my dear brothers and sisters during this christmas time christmas season it is such a privilege to uh, to connect again and it is a privilege it's a blessing to remember the gift of god and uh, we should not be taken away taken up by all the glitter around the celebration around and forget about the real crux of the christmas story that is the gospel of jesus christ that he himself came to save us and he was born as a baby we should never miss and get caught up in the other the glitter around christmas and uh, you know apparently someone overheard two chickens in conversation one chicken asked the other chicken in all seriousness what do you think do you think there is life after christmas very funny well is there what is the intent what is the true intent of christmas john 3:16 the most quoted very popular verse so god so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life and it is god's giving god so loved that he did not send down a committee but he sent down his son that was the purpose of christmas yes but right in the midst of celebrations in the midst of noise and get together and um all these events can there be loneliness there can be loneliness in fact in may 22 there was a publication from india it was a publication in the international journal of environmental research and public health and you know it said that 20.5% of all the adults in india above the age of 45 complained of moderate amounts of loneliness and 13.3% of those people said they feel terribly severely lonely many of them even in the middle of families they felt lonely in this particular study and you know dr vivek murthy who is the uh, who is the surgeon general of uh, the united states he took office he assumed office in march 2021 for the second time and he said i quote loneliness is not just a bad feeling he said one in two adults in the us have complained of loneliness and the health equivalent of the bad effects of loneliness is that of smoking 15 cigarettes per day if you are truly and severely feeling lonely is what he said so it is a big big epidemic of our times even in the times of social media people are stuck to their mobiles and no time to communicate in real life meaningful connections suffer and there is loneliness even in the midst of crowds and noise and pomp and celebrations prakash varma he was a uh, you know very successful um a marketer and he is the one who created that popular advertisement for vodafone the pug the little dog which followed him everywhere followed the children and followed the owners everywhere so you know you see the picture here of uh, another pug not the same pug photo by colin horn and why did that advertisement strike a chord why did it become so popular that is because people felt that this was the need oh with us 
everywhere, with me everywhere. It's a romantic idea. Isn't that true? We live in a generation plagued by loneliness. And this is addressed by the Christmas story. Matthew chapter 1 and verse 23. The virgin shall conceive and give birth to a son and they will call him Emmanuel. Isaiah had prophesied and in Matthew it is true, it has come, come true. In NIV this verse starts with Behold, look, the virgin will conceive and give birth to a son and they will call him Emmanuel. In fact, in the Hebrew original text, it is Edu, behold, look. It is something to be seen. Look, see, behold. God, the maker of heaven and earth, became man. John chapter 1, in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. That is John's rendering of the Christmas story. Word becoming flesh. Isn't that true? In verse 14, word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. God with us with broken men and women like you and like me. That is the message of Christmas, dear friends. Wherever you are today, during this season, going through those pangs of loneliness, maybe, and is this a message that you need it? You can reach out and grab hold of it and say, Lord, thank you, because the message of Christmas is the message to the lonely heart and to the lonely soul and to the lonely life. First of all, it is God with us, even in our tears. God with us in our tears. Psalm 34 and verse 18. Psalm 34 and verse 18, it says, we will read that, the Lord is close to the brokenhearted and saves those who are crushed in spirit. Dear brothers and sisters, do you have a crushed spirit? Are you a broken hearted person? We have broken hearts. The advertisement for very quick said, fixes everything except broken hearts. But here we have someone who can fix broken hearts too and primarily broken hearts. This is a psalm of David in uh, you know, Psalm 34 where he penned it when he was in the lowest of his life. He was running away from Abimelech and he was acting, he, had, he was forced to act like a madman, drooling saliva, scratching on doors just to make sure that Abimelech thinks he is insane so that he does not get him to serve him or enslave him. David must have thought, oh no, I have received God's promise. God's promise is that I will be the king of Israel, of Judah. But now I'm running away from my life. Saul is trying to kill me. And I'm walking around like a madman on the streets, drooling, scratching on doors. But he says, he consoles himself. The Lord is close to the broken hearted. Saves those in crushed in spirit. Emmanuel God with us in our tears. Is that you dear brother? Is that you dear sister? Isaiah chapter 42 and verse 3 says A bruised reed he will not break. And a smoldering wick he will not snuff out in faithfulness. He will bring forth justice. It's a messianic prophecy. But it's the Christmas message. That was the intent of Christmas. Hannah 
was an example. She had a crushed spirit. You remember that. She could only cry. She couldn't even vocalize. She could not utter any audible prayer. And Eli comes and says, Hey, well, why are you drunk even at this time in the morning? And she says, No, Eli. In 1 Samuel chapter 1 and verse 16, we will read that. I have been praying here out of my great anguish and grief. Dear friend, sometimes Christmas can be a time of tears, of great anguish and grief. Even when externally there is an appearance of joy and happiness and celebration, internally there is brokenness. Yes, it is possible in the midst of tears. It was true for Hannah when she came to the temple. But she went home a changed person because Eli gave God's word to her saying, your prayer is answered. She took that word and verse 18 of 1 Samuel chapter 1, it says, her face was not cast down anymore. So during this Christmas, we can receive the message of Christmas, Emmanuel, and say, Lord, I don't have to go around with my face cast down. Dear friend, is your face, your heart cast down? Do you want to receive God's Christmas message, Emmanuel, in the form of Jesus Christ? Lord, thank you for that. Your face will never be cast down if you remember that. The second submission is God in our fears. The first one was God in our tears, Emmanuel. In our tears, God with us in our fears. In Psalm 23 and verse 4, in the King James Version, it says, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Deuteronomy chapter 31, verse 6. We will read that together. Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or terrified because of them. For the Lord your God goes with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. Emmanuel, God with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. In Deuteronomy, Moses, the man of God, is talking um, he led the new insurgent, resurgent nation of Israel. He talks to the entire group, the folks that he was leading. And he is saying, be strong, be of good courage. Don't be afraid. What is he saying? You will not be alone. The Lord will be with you. Well, when do you tell a person not to be afraid? If you see a, you know, a group of youngsters hanging out, having fun together, if you go up to them and say, don't be afraid, you know, they, they would look at you and say, what's wrong with you? We are not afraid. But if you went and told a group of people who were about to be sent out as soldiers into war, active war, don't be afraid. His presence is with you. Yes, that is relevant there because there is fear. And, you know, it is when we realize that there are fears in our lives, Emmanuel, the reality of Emmanuel becomes so real in us, in our lives. And we receive that message and say, yes, Lord, I need this. There is the fear of the known and the fear of the unknown. There was a submarine called USS-4. It was sailing off the coast of Boston, on the east coast of the US. It was a Christmas season, 97 years ago, almost 97 years ago, December 17th of 1927. And 
during that time, you know, there was this submarine off the coast of Boston on the eastern coast of um, the US. Just before Christmas, people were ready to go off duty, but they were coming up, surfacing in this submarine called the USS S-4. And as they surfaced, they, there was a collision with another big ship, Navy ship, which was coming that way. There was a miscommunication. There was no communication. And therefore, the collision. And the submarine sank. And as they sank to more than 100 meters in depth and settled on the ocean floor, Graham Fitch, he was, he along with five others survived. All the rest died. And they went into one compartment where they could seal off. But then the power was lost and there the submarine could not rise. The Navy divers came, they connect, communicated through Morse code. The question asked by Graham Fitch was, is there any hope? And the answer came, yes, we are doing everything possible, trying to give them hope, but that was not to be. They were not able to rescue. By the time they surfaced the vessel, it was too late. They were all dead. It was a time of fear. And, you know, only God can authentically say there is hope. That is the Christmas message. Emmanuel, God with us, even in the midst of our fears. When man gives assurances, he has no power to keep it. But the Lord, when he gives an assurance, he can stand by his word because he's got the strength to do, it, do that. And we can receive it. Emmanuel, God with us. And that is something that we receive. God with us when we are unequal to the task. God with us, even in our tears. God with us, in our fears. God with us, when we are unequal to the task. Dear friend, during this Christmas season, you may be saying, I, I, I don't know how I'll fulfill all these, the demands on me. I'm not equal to the task ahead. What is asked of me is too much. I don't have the capability. Philippians chapter 2 and verse 13 says, For it is God who works in you to will and to act in order to fulfill his good purpose. To will and to act to work out his good purpose. Yes, when we are unequal to the task. 2 Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 5 not that we are competent in ourselves to claim anything for ourselves, but our competence comes from God. Emmanuel, God is with us. He is with us. That is the Christmas message. And we, it has relevance to our competence because our competence comes from God. As Paul said in 2 Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 5, Psalm 18 and verse 29, 18 and 29, with your help I can advance against a troop. With my God I can scale a wall. When we are unequal to the task, we need to say, Emmanuel, God with us. God with us in our brokenness. We see brokenness all around us, don't we? Dear brothers and sisters, Isaiah 57 and verse 15, For this is what the high and exalted one says, he who lives forever, whose name is holy. I live in a high and holy place, but also the one who is contrite and lowly in spirit to revive the spirit of the lowly and to revive the heart of the contrite. Broken hearts. God specializes. God has special interest in this. Emmanuel, 
God with us in our brokenness. Luke chapter 4, 18 and 19, Jesus explained the purpose of Advent, of Christmas, of his coming. He said that the prophecy had been fulfilled in himself, but soon they were up against him because they could not receive that message. What was it that he read? The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Turn to Luke chapter 4, 18 and 19. The Spirit of the Lord is on me because he has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners, the recovery of sight for the blind, to set the oppressed free, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. To the broken, the message is Emmanuel, God with us, God with us. Graham Kenrick's song, Meekness and Majesty, really encapsulates this. Meekness and majesty, manhood and deity. In perfect harmony, the man who is God, Lord of eternity, dwells in humanity, kneels in humility, washes our feet. Oh, what a mystery! Oh, meekness and majesty, bow down and worship, for this is your God. Oh, what a mystery, meekness and majesty, bow down and worship, for this is your God. Bow down and worship, for this is your God, Emmanuel. Dear friend, this is the Christmas message for your heart your soul. Hold it tightly. Don't leave. Hold on to it. Emmanuel, God with us. It is his name. God with us, even in our tears. God with us, even in our fears. God with us, when we are unequal to the task. God with us, even in our brokenness. Shall we repeat that so that we don't forget that? God with us in our tears, God with us in our fears, God with us when we are unequal to the task, God with us in our brokenness. What a beautiful Christmas message given to us in his word. Emmanuel, God with us. Shall we bow down? For this is our God. Bow down and worship. For this is your God. Meekness and majesty. We will pray. Wherever we are, wherever you are, different corners, different places, in whatever situation you are listening to it. Right now, during this Christmas season, or maybe listening to it at some other context, we will we'll pray. Heavenly Father, we just want to bow down and worship because we have seen meekness, but also majesty. We worship you because you are our God. You our Emmanuel, God with us in our tears. Emmanuel, God with us in our fears. Emmanuel, God with us when we are unequal to the task. Emmanuel, God with us in our brokenness. Thank you, Lord. That is your name. And we want to hold on to it. Thank you for that reality of Christmas. Thank you for offering yourself. And we want to receive with faith in humility and gratitude. Continue to speak to us. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Amen. And God bless you.